I am certain that there has been many a time when you have wondered if you should repot your orchid, whether your orchid needs repotting based on all the information you may be looking up to find the answer to your question, anything along the lines of repotting, right timing, etc. How about when you see so many different variables that you are a little confused as to whether your orchid actually needs repotting? Well, I hope this video will clear everything up for you as I go through the 10 common signs and symptoms that determine whether your orchid needs repotting or not. I think somewhere in there, there may be a bonus point as well. Not entirely sure, but <laughs> 10 is plenty as far as I'm concerned. If a single one of the signs and symptoms addressed in this video apply, your orchid needs repotting. However, as we look into the different scenarios, if the orchid in question ticks more than one of the signs and symptoms, you may need to get after it a little sooner rather than later. I will also give you the reasons why a repot is necessary for each individual occurrence so that you can add that to your observations and make the correct judgment. Even though I grow in inorganic media, this video is relevant for orchids grown in organic media as well as mounts. Yes, mounts. I will touch on those as well. Thank you for being here. A thumbs up would be greatly appreciated as well as your vote of confidence by subscribing to the channel. A great indicator that your orchid needs repotting is if the orchid is completely pot bound with overcrowded roots. If you're growing in pots that are not transparent and you are not sure if your orchid is pot bound, then you can grab the orchid by the base. And if the orchid is pot bound, you will be lifting the orchid up, including pot and all. <laughs> Usually, a pot-bound orchid's pot will also display signs of bulging in areas around the exterior perimeter. The roots may be crawling over the pot, in some cases encompassing the pot completely, and the pot will feel rock hard if it's not already a clay or terracotta pot. If none of these other exterior signs apply to your orchid with the exception of the pot lifting up when you lift the orchid up, you will also find that you're needing to water your orchid more often, seeing as the media dries out way too quickly. Personally, I do not mind watering my orchids, but it could pose lack of hydration issues with your orchid if it is pot bound and you don't notice what is going on and can't water as often as necessary, also based on your lifestyle. Transparent pots give you a great visual of your orchid being pot bound, but as you can see, not all of us grow in transparent pots, so these exterior signs are super important to take on board. Apart from being happy that the orchid has such a vigorous root system, things will not stay that way if not addressed. Overcrowded roots can lead to poor air circulation, water retention issues, and subsequently then nutrient deficiencies. If your orchid is showing yellowing or dead roots, then that needs to be addressed and only a repot can deal with them. If your pots are not transparent, you will notice that there's an issue in the pot because your structures are showing signs of not getting enough hydration. Pseudobulbs may shrivel, leaves may yellow prematurely, spikes may abort. In order to get the orchid back on track, a repot is needed at this stage because usually root rot can indicate insufficient drainage requiring a cleanup and fresh media, or actually root rot indicates dead roots. That means everything about the orchid is affected and a reset is necessary, which means a repot and give your orchid a fresh start. If your organic media is decomposing, then definitely repot your orchid as soon as the timing is best for the orchid. If you do not have transparent pots, you will have to use your sense of smell to determine if the media is broken down. And you will not need to have a very sensitive nose to recognize that there is something very wrong in your pot because broken down media has a pungent smell of decay, which is akin to the water in a vase of flowers and that is aging. It's not pleasant at all and is unmissable. Stakeable. The reason decomposing media needs replacing is because it loses aeration and water drainage properties, which in turn will affect root health. Personal plug here right now, I have a video on how long is too long to wait when repotting an orchid that is in decomposing media. How you can tide the orchid over without repotting, without risking your roots, while you wait for a new root system to grow so as not to stress the orchid out further. The video addresses your pH levels to ensure that your orchid can still take up nutrients while you wait for new root growth, as well as how to care for the orchid during the waiting period working with the decomposing media. 
I will link that video in the description. In my opinion, it is an eye-opener and well worth watching because it will give you peace of mind no matter the state of the media. Besides, you will not stall your orchid when you repot because the new roots will get fresh media. You and your orchid will be winning all the way to when she blooms for you. So check out that video in the description. And I was so excited to get into this video, I just jumped right in, which is a bit awkward. <laughs> Hi, thank you for clicking on the video. Know that I appreciate your time. It's good to have you here. Remember to like the video. I would appreciate if you were to share it around and I would appreciate it if you would be so kind as to subscribe to the channel. Thank you. <laughs> Now, the number four has always been my favorite, but that does not make this sign that a repotting needs to be in the future of your orchid. One of my signs has nothing to do with my favorite number, but the sign of stagnant growth. When you have your orchid over a period of time and it has its certain behaviors with new growths, the number of new growths and their sizes once mature, then suddenly, if nothing else was wrong with your environment, it doesn't perform as to what you are used to. Uh, there's something not quite right in the pot and you need to check what is going on. It could be that your media is still fine and your fertilizer levels are not, or your fertilizer levels are spot on, but the media is degrading and your pH is off because the media degrading is turning acidic. Either way, your orchid is not able to take up nutrients. Another reference to the video I mentioned earlier, but take a moment to assess why your orchid is not growing the new growth as per what would be normal, or why your orchid is not growing any growths at all, which would also not be normal. Now, another reason is if your orchid is rising out of the pot, then the repot is going to be necessary. This does not apply to orchids that have a natural climbing habit, but mainly our slipper orchids, and in some cases, aging Phalaenopsis, the old ladies in your collection. These orchids need to have their bases just barely covered by media because of where the roots start. Now, especially with slipper orchids, if the roots do not get into the media soon enough, then they will fail. Other orchids may abort new roots because of the lack of ambient humidity if they are too high above the media. The roots aborting because of lack of ambient humidity will also affect our climbing orchids. So keep that in mind. There is only so much of the back end of the orchid you can keep lower in the pot to make the base of the rhizome with the new roots snug with the media. However, if repotting every two to three years takes place, then the new roots should be fine until they reach the media. Or if you cannot repot while new roots are growing, encourage them to extend into the media by placing sphagnum moss underneath their growing trajectory to keep that area damp, thus increasing the humidity and avoid any roots from aborting. In addition to all this, any signs of pests and disease on your orchids could pose a great reason to repot. Especially recommended if you grow in organic media. Pests and their eggs, as well as fungi spores, have an excellent environment to continue perpetuating their presence in organic media. Repotting an orchid that has a pest issue or a fungi issue helps to remove any pests or pathogens that may be present in the media and provides a fresh start for the orchid. For orchids grown in inorganic media, while pests and pathogens can remain present, the inorganic media is a hostile environment and if the orchid is treated to avoid any spreading of other inflictions, the inorganic media is not a harborer for eggs to return and perpetuate the infestations. And there is something very important to keep in mind as well when it comes to the roots of your orchids, apart from the nice and healthy beautiful root tips that we see as they escape through the drainage holes at the bottom or the sides of the pots. In the cases of pots having aeration holes or slits, you may want to make sure that nothing is plugged up because the roots are filling in those gaps. The water will end up having no easy way to drain, which can result in the pot staying wet for too long. All these beautiful roots plugging up our drainage holes or aeration holes, well, they will also stop the drainage and the aeration. That is not so much an issue during the warmer months of the year, but definitely something to take into consideration during the months of the year when the temperatures are cooler. Your pot may be staying wet for too long, not because the orchid is pot bound, but the beautiful roots are clogging up the gaps. Not addressing this kind of an orchid could result in root rot. 
At the opposite end of the spectrum, if your pot is drying out too fast, not because the orchid in question is a heavy drinker for a couple of months in its growing habit, but if you feel that you just can't keep up with watering, then a repot is definitely necessary. This indicates that the choice of media in the pot is not the right mix for your orchid in your climate, and adding smaller grade bark or leaving the chunkier bark as is, but mixing some sphagnum moss into the pot will help resolve the problem. If you're growing in inorganic media, then addressing this issue is easy by using smaller great chunks of whatever inorganic media you are using for your orchid. Despite lecker or lava rock all being in the same bag mixed up, picking out only small lecker or small lava rock pieces for the repot will resolve the watering issue and your orchid will have a longer time to hydrate. Seeing any unhealthy appearance of our structures looking a little bit off is always alarming. The appearance of your leaves, the shriveling pseudobulbs, concertina leaves, dried leaf tips, deficiencies, and spotting that looks as if it could be a fungus. Sometimes the cells look like a virus when the light shines through, but none of these cases would apply. It is time to repot because either the media has degraded and is a fungal petri dish in its own right, which is transmitted into the orchid structure, or the roots are failing in the pot and a reset will be necessary. I would consider examples that fall under this scenario as an emergency. You may have just opened a fresh bag of bark and a few months later your orchid is exhibiting spotting, but you don't suspect it is the bark seeing as it is fresh out of the bag. Oh, unfortunately, sometimes organic media is compromised from where it was packaged to when it arrived in our home. You may have bought it fresh but during the time it was bagged, the seal may have broken, the storage was wrong, creating condensation within the bag, and you may have a new bag of bark that has fungal spores in it, and these are now affecting your orchid. Hopefully that never happens, but if you see issues with your orchid and there really is no other reason, then I would be suspicious about the supposed fresh bark. And these symptoms of spotting, etc., shriveling pseudobulbs, looking a little bit lackluster and why, when a couple of weeks ago everything was fine, these are the same if your mount is degrading. Spores and bacteria taking out organic mounts will transmit to your orchid, although no repot in this case unless you choose to pot the orchid in question up, but definitely a fresh mount is needed if you see fungi on your leaves for no other obvious reasons. Also, if you see new growth just rotting at the base, then the orchid grows another new growth, but that fails as well. That is a clear sign of bacteria on the mount, which just love the new growths because they are a soft environment to take hold of. A degrading mount will also hold on to water much longer, so fungi and bacteria will have a field trip while you are under the impression that your orchid is getting enough aeration, which it is not really because everything is staying a little bit too wet. It's a beautiful little microclimate for the beasties to take hold and induce rot. Now, if your orchid is showing signs of a fusarium infection, blackening root tips, stained velamen, lackluster, unhealthy looking structures, leaves and shriveled pseudobulbs, of course it is possible to soak the pot with fungicide to treat the orchid in the hopes that the spread of fusarium will stop. However, push comes to shove, it is best to unpot the orchid, check how bad the infection has spread through the rhizome, and then make a calculated decision if the orchid has enough substance to pull through or if it needs to be discarded entirely. Either way, getting a fusarium infected orchid into new media is the first step of helping an orchid survive. There are no guarantees, but leaving an orchid in a pot that needs to have a treatment which includes submerging the orchid completely, huh, a repot into fresh media after soaking the orchid will make that treatment a lot more effective. And if you're still here, you benefit from a bonus point. Just a little maybe your orchid needs repotting. It's not an emergency, but definitely will make your life easier moving forward. So if your orchid is top heavy and has the tendency to always topple over, even if your orchid is not pot bound, you are the grower that likes to have small pots for your orchids as is common in orchid cultivation. When you have a tall orchid that is always under the threat of toppling over, it is going to snap roots every time it does fall over, as well as the threat of damaging structures is an inevitable consequence. Not to mention the threat a top heavy orchid poses to all the orchids in its vicinity. Playing dominoes with your orchids all lined up 
above or below is not something any of us want to have to worry about. Repotting top heavy orchids and getting a rock into the bottom of the pot will definitely solve that problem and remove the threat of walking into your space one day and seeing things as they should not be, as in all over the place with media all over the place and yikes, orchids have come out of their pot and not only just the top heavy one. I hope that this video was helpful, gave you a checklist to keep in mind as you go about your orchid growing endeavors. If you have any other pointers that I have not mentioned here, please add those in the comments. I would appreciate that and I'm sure anyone reading the comments for more information or clarification will as well. Of that, I am certain. I want to thank you so much for watching the video to the end. Know that I wish you a wonderful day on that condition that you stay safe though. Take care. Bye.